Well, welcome back. Having a great working relationship and communication with your colleague, manager, or direct report isn't always an easy thing. But there are things you can do to help ensure a positive work environment. Here with some advice is President and CEO of Arta Consulting, Dr. Eileen Jason. Hello. Dr. Jason, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Thanks for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. Oh, pleasure. So, um, companies, I know that we talked about maybe beforehand some of the issues facing companies today. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about them. Yeah, so some of the things aside from millennials, I'm finding a lot of uh, challenges mm -hmm. with incorporating the millennial generation into the existing workforce. Um, Just a different mindset, right, for them, right? Completely different mindset, um, but they're not all that bad. Okay. <laughs> they <laughs> right. really aren't. Right. They just work a little bit differently than, than let's say, you or I do and, uh -huh. and our previous generation did. Okay. Um, you know, they, they're much quicker to pick up on things. They're much better at um, uh, technology, mm -hmm. for instance, and okay. uh, so they learn a little bit differently because they are actually quite intelligent um, okay. and they really want to get things done. They're also very socially conscious. Hmm. Um, they want to work for a company that does things to help the environment, that helps with social issues. Okay. Uh, they feel that there's a lot of things that are out there that needs to be done mm -hmm. and they're very passionate about it, but they can't necessarily get it done um, by themselves. So they are looking for companies that, that have that access to do that. So. Given the fact that we are old school and they're new school, mm -hmm. some of the differences, some of the difficulties that uh, yeah, can encounter. Sure. One of the things is flexibility. Okay. Um, the millennial generation is looking for flexibility. Mm -hmm. uh, previous generations are you clock in at 8, you leave at 5, Correct. you have an hour for lunch. Right. You want to go home to the kids exactly. and all that, right? Yep. They don't, they don't want any <laughs> don't parts want of right. that. <laughs> <laughs> and frankly, it's a different mindset. You know, they're, they're very good at what they do. They can get things done in a mm -hmm. different manner. Okay. Um, they certainly like their freedom to come and go as they please. And it mm. doesn't necessarily mean that you have to accommodate, you know, all of the time right. them doing that, but certainly working with them and, and allowing for that flexibility um, will help the generation specifically. And, and they'll work for you. They'll, right. They'll definitely have uh, more. Um, what is emotional intelligence? So emotional intelligence essentially is becoming more self-aware of your okay. behaviors. Or your emotions. Your emotions, keeping them under control, but understanding your behaviors okay. specifically. Um, so for example, mm -hmm. if you're the kind of person that prefers to do work by yourself. Me, yes, that's absolutely me. <laughs> Don't yes. want anybody around you. Right. You want to be in a room, get your work done. Um, then there's the other type of individuals who prefer to be with a room full of people. Okay. They prefer the sort of chaos, so to speak, or okay. they love to have people around. Uh -huh. um, and then you have your sort of dominant people, you know, the people that are uh, very much like decision makers. Could be. Right. <laughs> but it's I don't all know good. your it's wife. It's all in a good way. No, no. <laughs> exactly. It's all good. Right, Thank right, you for right. saying that. I, I often say that to people when I, when I go in to do an assessment or we do any types of uh, behavioral assessments. Uh -huh. They kind of think, oh, what's wrong with me? And, and the fact of the matter is there's nothing wrong. Right. It's just a different behavior. Um, the importance is understanding uh -huh. your behavior. So, right. for example, if you are a dominant person and you want to mm -hmm. make decisions and you know you're right, you have right. you know these, these things that you want to do and you get them done quickly, you're much more bottom line oriented uh -huh. as opposed to detail. If you're working with someone who is detail oriented, right. the communication is quite different. Hmm. So if you're someone who has more of a dominant behavior right. and you have a direct report who wants to go into a corner, do mm -hmm. their tasks, those types of things, you want to understand that relationship. Um, especially if during stressful times, if you're a dominant right. person and you get stressed out, yes. chances are you're going to become extremely aggressive. Or you're irritable. Irritable, <laughs> aggressive, yep, very, very dominant. Right, exactly. And if you ask for something to be done in uh -huh. that manner, um, people may take it personally. You know, right. they may say, oh my gosh, this person doesn't like me, what am I right, doing wrong? Right, right, right. So uh, what I do is I try to go and help and understand, no, there's nothing wrong with that. That person is under stress. Once you learn that behavior, right. um, emotional intelligence, you become more aware of how you interact with others, okay. how you affect that working relationship. Um, there are recent studies that um, are, are have been shown specifically mm -hmm. Um, 3M, for a matter of, as a matter of fact, just recently did 3M, the, co the, the company 3M. Okay, yeah. 3M company, okay. They went through an emotional intelligence training and increased their sales productivity by 90%. 90%. 90 percent. 90 percent. 90 percent. Yeah. So, oh my God. You know, when people hear this emotional intelligence, a lot right. of times they're like, oh, it's fluff, it's not you know, okay. genuine, it's not real. Right, right. And the fact of the matter is that it does increase productivity. Wow. Um, once you understand how you can better communicate with someone, uh -huh. you can use that to your advantage. Sure. Um, 
we always say the golden rule is, you know, treat others mm -hmm. as you want to be treated. That's right. Well, that's no longer true. Right. It's treat or others treat how they like want to be treated. Treat your neighbor like you want to be treated, right? Right. Although but now I never see my neighbor, but anyway. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but now it's treat others how you, how they want to be treated. So sometimes it gets you okay. out of your comfort zone if you're um, a dominant person, mm -hmm. you know, and you have to talk to this person who wants to do their tasks individually. Right. You may have to get out of your comfort zone and understand Which I the way they need do to communicate. Which I do a lot, yeah. But. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> you have As, to, right? Well, you're absolutely right. As a host, you right. know, you're a perfect example. You've got to sort of um, do, do different things, different talk things. to people right, Absolutely. I mean, each person is different, so you've exactly. got to approach it a little bit differently. Exactly. Um, so what is the secret to communicating effectively with somebody? Yep. Obviously, it's not yelling over the top of their head or anything, Correct. right? Correct. Is it listening a good part of it as well? Listening is a very good part of it, but um, more importantly, understanding their behaviors, how okay. they receive communication. Right. Have you ever seen, you know, Abbott and Costello? Oh, I've seen, I've so seen it actually on your, on yeah. your video yes, that you did exactly. on your website. Yes, I have Absolutely. That, you know, Watson the what, who, who, right, right. it's a perfect example of, you know, someone who needs different types of information but is okay. getting other types of information and there's you know real buttheading going on by oh, absolutely. not understanding what they're saying and it causes frustration <laughs> so, so if Abbott knew what right. Costello wanted uh -huh. um, it may have brought him out of his comfort zone okay but certainly it would have had a more effective result um, all right by so others. we got about 20 seconds left real okay. quickly mm -hmm. where do you see the future going for the I absolutely feel that um, executives and CEOs who are really interested and right. really want to find out what they're um, employees are uh -huh. doing and how to interact um, with them more effectively, they'll have productivity through the roof. There you go. Through the roof. Thank yep. you so much for being here. You're welcome. Thank you for it. having me. I appreciate All right. it. Okay, guys, still to come. What's hot in fashion this spring? Ahead, get a sneak peek as we take you backstage and talk with some up-and-coming designers at New York Fashion Week. Stay tuned.